Hi and welcome to another tutorial on coding in C Sharp. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make comparisons in C Sharp using if statements. So to get started what I'm going to do is just clear the code from the previous tutorial in our main method. So we've got no code inside the main method and we'll start from there. And firstly what we'll do is we'll start with uh, integers. Um, so comparing integers and the same process applies for um, working with floats, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by creating an integer variable. I'll just call it x and we'll give this a value of say 15. Okay, now what we can do is we can use conditional statements or if statements in C sharp to compare whether x is um, greater than another value or whether it's less than or whether it's equal to something or whether it's not equal to something. And so to start a, an if statement, what we do is write if, and then in brackets, what we do is specify the condition. So we start with what we want to check. So we want to check the variable x, and we might start by checking, is it greater than, oops, is it greater than, so using the greater than symbol, is it greater than, say, 10? Okay, so that's our condition that we're checking. We're checking whether this condition evaluates to true, so whether x is greater than 10. Okay, and then what we do is specify the action that will occur if this if statement evaluate, evaluates to true, and we put that inside curly brackets. Okay, so we've got an open curly bracket here and a closing curly bracket down here, and we'll put the code inside this if statement, which will run only if x is greater than 10. So what we might do is just say console.write line x is greater than than 10. Okay, now if we have a look at x, we um, know that it's greater than 10. Okay, so x is 15, it's definitely greater than 10. So this statement, this if statement, should evaluate to true, and so we should see the output x is greater than 10. So let's run that, and there we go, we see x is greater than 10. Now just make sure that you always, when you start. Um, specifying the condition that you put it inside normal brackets. So you open the bracket and close the bracket and make sure that the action is inside curly brackets and that you always close the curly brackets. So um, make sure you've got matching brackets. Okay, so now what we could do is check if it's less than 10 and run that. And we don't see any message at all because X is not less than 10 and we haven't specified what will happen if x is um, less than 10. Uh, so let's maybe just change this value here. We'll change x to 7. And now run it. And yep, 7. Uh, whoops, we should actually change the message to say x is less than 10. And when we run it, we, we see that output x is less than 10 because 7 is less than 10. We can also check, so we checked whether a value um, whether the variable is greater than value or less than a value. We can also check if it's equal to a value. So what we could do is make x 10 and we'll check if x is equal to 10. So we'll just change the message that's displayed. And what we can do is we can say equals, but we say two equals signs. So when we use one equals sign, it means that we're assigning a value to a variable. We're making something equal to something else. When we use two equal signs, though, we're making a comparison. So we're checking if x is equal to 10. We're not making it equal to 10, we're checking if it's equal to 10. So two equal signs there. So now if we run that, we see x is equal to 10 because it is equal to 10. Okay, so we looked at less than, looked at greater than, uh, and we've looked at uh, equal to. Okay, we can also check if something is greater than or equal to. So we can say greater than or equal to. So it's a greater than symbol and equal sign. And this will display x is equal to 10. Uh, x is uh, greater than or equal to 10 actually. Okay, so that's what we should see because x is equal to 10, which means it's either um, it is equal to 10, which means it's either equal or greater than 10, okay? What we can do is we could change x to 20, and we'll still see that message, x is, x is greater than or equal to 10, 
because um, we're checking if one of those conditions is true. So x has to be either exactly equal to 10 or greater than 10. If it's one or the other, then it will display this message here. We can also change this to less, so check if it's less than or equal to 10. So maybe we'll make this uh, 10 again. Okay, we see that message. This time we'll make it say five. And we should still see that message because one of those conditions is being met. It's either less than or equal to, in this case, five is less than 10. Okay, so, so far we've looked at greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, and we've also looked at equal to. We can also check if something is not equal to something else. So we can use an exclamation mark and an equal sign. And so we can check if X is not equal to 10. So we'll run this. And X is five, so it's not equal to 10, so it displays that message. If we make X 10, X is now equal to 10, so it doesn't display that message. Okay, so what we've done here is we've just got one if statement. We've checked different conditions to see what would happen. But what if we want to display something else based on uh, what the condition evaluates to? So what we can do is we'll make x equal to 10 again. And the first condition we'll check is if x is greater than 10. All right, and if it is, we'll say x is greater than 10. All right. Now, if we want to display a message if x is not greater than 10, then what we can do is we can say else if and add another condition that we can check. So this time we could say x, we can check if x is less than 10. Okay, and we add curly brackets again to put our code inside for the action. And so this time we're going to say if x is less than 10, we'll output the message x is less than 10. Okay, so we've got an if, and we've got an else if statement. Okay, so first we're checking if x is greater than 10. If it is, we display that message. And now we're also going to check if x is less than 10, and if it is, display this message. Okay, let's run it. And we get nothing. And that's because x is exactly equal to 10. So it's not greater than 10, and it's not less than 10. It actually is equal to 10. So what we could do is we could display an else statement. And with an else statement, we know that we know that if x is not greater than 10, if it's not less than 10, then it has to be 10. There's nothing else it can be. It's either less than, uh, greater than, or equal to 10. All right? So there's only three possible scenarios there. So rather than saying else if x is equal to 10, we can just say else we don't need to specify a condition. We can just say else, add our curly brackets, and we can display a message here saying x is equal to 10, because if it's not less than or greater than 10, then it has to be equal to 10. So basically, we've got one condition we check for, and we also check for another condition here, and then we just have a default statement here if neither of those conditions are met. So let's run it now. And we get the message x is equal to 10 because it is. Now let's change x to 9. And we see x is less than 10. Now let's change x to 11. And we see x is greater than 10. Okay, so that's using if, st if statements, an else if statement, and an else statement. And we can have as many else if statements as we want. So we could go and add other else if statements, like we could check if uh, x is exactly equal to 15, or if it's exactly equal to 20 or something like that. We could go and check other conditions as well using multiple else if statements. But um, if we're going to do that, we usually just have one if statement that we ask uh, that we start with. We'd have a few else if statements in between, and then lastly, a single else statement uh, for if any of those other conditions haven't been met. So there's one if, and one else statement, um, and we can have multiple else if statements. Okay, so we can also have multiple if statements if they're not um, 
if they're unrelated. So we could put if x is greater than 10, if x is less than 10, if x is equal to 10. Um, we could also do it that way as well. Okay, so now let's have a look at strings. So let's make x a string variable. And let's just say, uh, we'll change x actually to password. Now let's make it a string. And we'll make the password something like hello. Okay, and we'll get rid of these statements here. And so if we're comparing a string, what we need to do is to say if, and then our brackets, password, if we want to check if the password is equal to pa uh, password is equal to hello, we can use two equal signs. And then we put a value in a string here as a string in quotes, double quotes. And then we could say something like uh, password is correct. Oops. And we can put that in a console dot write line statement. Oops. Close up that bracket there. Okay, there we go. So um, this could be maybe user input. So we could actually get input from the user. They can enter a password and we can check if their password is equal to hello. If it is, display that message. So we'll test that. We get that message. Password is correct. Okay. Maybe if we change this password to something like goodbye, we'll see that we don't get any output because the condition does not evaluate to true. So maybe we could put something like else. We can have an else statement if this condition is not met. Say else. Password is incorrect. And run that. And there we go. Okay, so those are um, some examples of basic if statements in the C sharp language. So we've looked at if, we've looked at else, and we've looked at else if conditional statements in C sharp. In the next tutorial, we'll look at um, other methods of testing conditions. We'll look at something called the switch statement. Okay? Thanks for watching.